Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about tuning a room. I get a lot of questions from customers. They seem to be really confused and they start at the wrong end of the spectrum, so to speak, and I think they get uh, confused <laughs> throughout the whole process. So hopefully this will help a little bit and if we can get some definition and we can uh, look at what we're trying to do here, take, step back, take a deep breath. The first thing, of course, when we're tuning a room is dimensions, volume, and usage. We want to have the right size room for whatever we're doing. Drum room, vo vocal rooms, listening rooms, home theater rooms, control rooms, live rooms, they're all different. So usage is really critical. Usage determines how much volume we'll, we need, length, width, height, and the appropriate dimensions to uh, minimize modal pressure issues. So. We need to consider those three variables whenever we're looking at tuning a room. Speaker location, very, very critical. What is the speaker? It's the energy producing source within the room, or if it's a singer in a vo vocal room, or if it's drums in a live room. Whatever the sound source is, that's what you have to look at. That's the generating energy device within the room. So that's what you have to make sure is located correctly within the volume of the room and within the dimensions of the room and obviously within the usage of the room. So the sound generating source, in our example here, we've used the speaker, but if it's an instrument, there is a particular spot in the room that produces the smoothest curve. Is the smoothest curve what we want? Once again, it depends on usage. If you're recording versus playback, all, all these variables have to be considered. So finding the correct location of the sound source is critical. Always start with the low frequency first. If you don't get the lows right in the room, nothing in the mids and highs makes any sense because you're naturally struggling to listen through the unwanted pressure areas in the room. And remember, a 30, 40, 50, 60 cycle pressure area, modal area, has the harmonics, the 120s, the 180s. All of these have to be taken into consideration. So you must manage the low frequency energy in the room correctly. And I think we all know that foam and building insulation and things like that are not real good low frequency management tools, regardless of what manufacturers say. Foam is not a bass trap. Okay, so low frequency management. Use the correct technology to manage the low energy within your room, depending on volume, dimension, and usage. A vocal room is going to have less energy than a drum room. So you can apply different technologies to manage the low frequency energy. Attack and decay, that's the big thing with low end. Make sure every note is just like the middle frequencies and the high frequencies. You hear the beginning, you hear the life of the note, and you hear the end. All three areas within that have to be taken into consideration. Attack and decay rates are critical. And that'll get you the right uh, low end response that you're after. Middle frequencies, you want definition, separation. Um, you want uh, good uh, layering of the mids in your presentation. They kind of ride upon the low frequencies. So if you, if you keep each group or each frequency group as a, a band, then you can uh, understand that the lows are first, then the middles and the highs, and they all kind of ride together. And then around the edges, they, they all smooth out. So you want to make sure you have definition and separation in your middle frequencies. The highs, they're like the mids on the lows. They ride upon the mids. So you have to have that layering of the highs too. Diffusion is a really good technique to deal with high frequency energy. So we have the tools at our disposal. So tuning a room, Dimensions, volume, and usage satisfy those three variables. Locate the sound source in the correct area to get the smoothest response. And then apply your low frequency, middle frequency, and high frequency management techniques to get a good balance between the three. In graphic one, you see that we divide the frequency response range into three areas. So that's what you have to do. The low end is anything below 100. The middle frequency range is from 100 to 2000 and 2000 up for the highs. So 
take each frequency range, low, mids, and highs, and, and divide it into that group. The second graphic here is a little bit of fun, tongue in cheek, but the container that our ice cream sundaes come in is the low frequency. The ice cream is the middle frequency, and of course the nuts or the whipped cream on top are the high frequencies. Layers, one supporting the other. So you have to keep all of these uh, things in mind when you're uh, tuning a room. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section, and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com, and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.